Welcome back to part two of the basics of CG compositing in Nuke. In the last video, we pulled in the render and got all the basics set up. And in this video, we're gonna dive a bit more in depth into some compositing tips and tricks. This is where we left everything last time. We have our shadow set up here, and then we have our car with a couple of bits of grading and the ZD focus on it. In the last video, we started doing a bit of color grading and stuff to the car paint here. There's a couple of other bits of the render that I think could use a bit of love color wise. Firstly, I think all of the carbon fiber looks a bit bright and lifted, so I'm just gonna crunch that down ever so slightly. To do that, I'm gonna add another Cryptomat node. I'm gonna change it back to Crypto Material, and I'm just gonna select the carbon fiber by control, click and dragging on the carbon fiber sections. Gonna make a bit more space for myself here so that I have some room to work. Press G to add a grade node and plug it into the main stream, and then use the mask input, plug that into the Cryptomat node we just created. And then I think I'll just pull the gamma down ever so slightly, and that should look a bit better, I think. Yeah, there we go. So before, after, it was all just looking a bit lifted before. The next thing I'm gonna show is quite a good trick for CG. You definitely don't wanna do this on everything, but one of the criticisms of a lot of CG cars and CG objects in general for that matter, is they're always way too clean. In Blender, I did actually hand paint some stuff with some stencils on the body to create some water run marks and some bits where the dirt builds up around the edges of the doors. But even so, all of this area and stuff looks a little bit too clean. So if you're finding that with your CG renders, there's a really cool thing you can do with a channel in the utility render that will allow you to add some grime and dirt and stuff onto your model. The pass we're gonna use is called the UV pass, and it looks like this. This pass basically tells Nuke how all of the faces were unwrapped in the 3D program and allows you to apply UVs to them in 2D. To use this, we're gonna to have to shuffle it out first. So add a shuffle node, plug it into your utility render, and we're gonna set the input layer to be the UV pass. Click and drag these six dots here and drag it across to connect them to the output layer. And I usually just turn on the alpha as well by clicking this white dot here. So now if we look at this, you can see we have our UVs shuffled out. The next thing I'm gonna do is create a texture to put on top. In this example, I'm just gonna use a noise texture, but what you can do is get textures like this from somewhere like textures.com that are streaks or mud textures or whatever you want to do. And you can use them to apply to the whole model. But like I said, for this example, let's just use a noise texture. So I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller by turning down the size. Then the way we apply this onto the 3D model is to search for an ST map node. This node will use the UV data from this pass and it will tell Nuke how to wrap the noise texture around our 3D model. So take the ST map input and plug it into the shuffle node with our UVs and then take the source input and plug it into the noise texture. Now we look at this currently, it's going a bit nuts, but we have to set the UV channels in the node to RGB, which is what our UVs are currently shuffled into here. Now if I look at this now, you can see it's applying that noise texture across our entire 3D model of the car. Changing the scale will change how it's displayed on the car. And you can also do things like adding a grade node and crunching it up and crunching it down to change how much of the areas are black and white. What I'm gonna do is combine this with a mask from the body paint Cryptomat, and I'm gonna apply this noise texture just onto the car paint. To do that, add a merge node by pressing M, connect the B input to the ST map node, the A input to the body paint Cryptomat, and look at that. And then I'm gonna set the operation to mask, and that's gonna use this alpha from the Cryptomat to just cut out that section of the body paint. Then what I'm gonna do is multiply this on top of the car. Realistically, I don't want to do this on top of the highlights. I want to do it just on the color, kind of like we did how when we were changing the color of the car in the last video. So I'm gonna do it after we've taken off the highlights and before we put them back on. So to do that, press M again to add another merge node, plug it in just before you add the highlights back on top and then connect the A input over here to our noise texture. I'm gonna hold control, click and drag to make it a bit neater. That's what it looks like currently. And then I'm gonna change the merge operation to multiply. Currently it's going over the headlights and everything as well, so take the mask input on the merge node and just plug it into the crypto map for the body paint and that will only make it go on top of the car paint. Now if I turn this on and off, you can see we're applying this really nice grunge texture over all of the car paint, which really helps to break it up and make it look a bit less CG. It's obviously way too strong at the moment, so you can use the mix slider in the merge node to turn it right down and just sort of fine tweak it until you get it to a point where you like it. That looks pretty good to me, just adding a bit of variation into that red, maybe a tiny bit more, something like that. And then the highlights and stuff go back on top after that. And this is what it looks like now on top of our footage. So before grunge texture, after. Now it's probably quite a good time to go back and tweak the shadow to get it looking a bit nicer. One of the tricky things with CG shadows is getting a nice mix between the kind of general shadow and some really harsh contact shadows where things are actually touching the floor. This shadow doesn't look too bad, but under the tires it should be much darker where when they're really close to the floor, they're basically blocking all of the light. So there shouldn't be so much bounce light around these areas. To do that, I'm just gonna draw some masks myself to create some extra contact shadows. To do that, press O to add a roto node. And then I'm gonna come in here and just draw some very simple shapes. With the roto node selected, press B to add a bit of a blur onto it. If I look at this and look at the alpha channel by pressing A, you can turn up the blur a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a grade node by pressing G, plug this in just before the shadow connect this to the blur and just turn the gain down a bit so that we get those contact shadows. 
Now have a look at that. You can see that's pretty good. I'm just going to make it a bit less mental. Something like that. Then I just want to blend it into the rest of the shadow a bit better as well. So with the shape selected, you can hold control and click and drag individual points to kind of feather it more manually like this. And this should just help to blend it into the rest of the shadow quite nicely. So that's before, that's after. You can see that there's some nice occlusion going on by the wheels now. I also think the very underneath of the car here should be darker. So what I'm going to do is use the shadow pass again, but erode it down so it's much closer to the center and grade the very underneath of the car down more. To do that, I'm going to add an erode node. That rhymes. Plug this in after the lens distortion setup and then look at the alpha. I'm going to set the channels up here to be RGBA. And I'm going to crank this up slightly and start to erode the shadow down inwards like this. So now our alpha is much more closed down before and after. I'm going to add another grade node by pressing G, add it after all the other shadows, connect it to the erode, look at this and come out of the alpha mode, and then just grade this down a bit. It would probably help if I looked at it with the car on top so I can gauge how much it needs to go. Something like that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to erode it even more like that and then also blur it a bit. So press B to add a blur and then I'm just going to crank this up a bit. And then it's just a case of going back and forth and getting it looking nice. So if I turn that on and off, you can see that looks a lot more realistic because under the car shouldn't have so much bounce light. And I think now we've added all of those extra shadows, the original shadow can probably get a bit lighter so it's a bit less aggressive. And then darken this one down more. I think the original one is also a bit too sharp for the lighting conditions, so I'm going to put a bit of a blur on this one as well. So hit B, connect this in between the original shadow and the colour correct, and then just crank this up a bit. Then let's go a little bit darker, and then make the underneath one much darker as well. About there. Okay, there we go. That's the shadows. We've done it in three different bits, but that really helps from originally what it was like this. The shadow now looks a lot more realistic. That's pretty much all the comp stuff in terms of bedding it into the shot. Now we can add a couple of last minute bits just to make it look nicer. The first one I'm going to do is put a bit of a glow on the headlights. Normally with a render like this you would have an emission pass for the headlights, but because they're behind the glass there isn't actually anything in the emission channel. If I show you, it looks like this. So annoyingly we can't separate the headlights out that easily. But because they're so bright we can just do a quick luminance key to isolate them. So to do that I'm going to add a Kia node and just plug it into the bottom of the CG render. And if I look at this and then look at the alpha channel, I'm just going to crunch this down until we're just isolating the very brightest bits of the headlights about there. Then I want to do a garbage mat just to get rid of all the other reflections. To do that hit O to add a roto node and I'm just going to draw a couple of shapes around the headlights like this. And then hit M to add a merge node and connect those two up and set the operation to mask. And now you can see we have just the headlights isolated. If I look back at the RGBA channel, I'm going to add a pre molt node to cut these out and now we have them on their own. There's a glow node in Nuke that we can use. I usually use a third party node that's a bit better, but because this is a beginner's tutorial, we're not gonna dive into that. So I'm just gonna do two levels of glow. I'm gonna turn the size right down on the first one, make it nice and small, very close to the source. Then I'm gonna add a second one and make it much, much bigger and turn the mix down. So probably something like that. Turn the mix down and then let's maybe even do one more. So I'm gonna press Control C and then Control V to paste it underneath. Turn the size up even more, turn the mix down. And that looks pretty nice. So now we have quite a nice fall off there. I'm also going to add a grade node and just put some blue into the gamma to make them pop a bit more as the headlights. Then I'm going to put this back on top of the car. So add a merge node, connect it up to the car render, and I'm going to set the merge operation to screen. And as you can see, that just gives the headlights a bit of a bloom effect. And then finally, we're going to create some streaky flares just going horizontally across the screen. We're going to do that with a few different levels of blur. So I'm going to add a blur node first of all, connect it to the pre molt and then just neaten this up a bit by holding control, clicking and dragging to make a dot. We're going to make a few of these so we need a good point to plug it into. In the blur node, you can press this two next to the size slider and that will separate it into width and height individually. We're only really going to blur horizontally, so I'm going to set the width to something like five to start off with. Then I'm going to duplicate it by control C and control Ving it. Look at the new one, set it to something a bit higher like 10, maybe even higher, let's go 20. You can kind of get the idea of this. We're going to keep doing this and setting it to higher numbers each time. So let's go 40 and then another one. Let's go for something much higher like 100, make a bit more space. And then let's go for one more, 250. So now we have all of these streaks, what we can do is select them all, press M. That creates a merge node underneath with all of them connected. I'm going to set this to plus. I'm going to grab the grade node that I put on here and just put the same sort of blue onto these streaks. So you can see if I just turn that on and off, they go nice and blue. And then the same thing again. So I'm going to add another merge node, connect the B into the background, the A into the streaks. And if I look at this, set it to screen. Obviously that's pretty mental, but you can turn the uh, mix slider right down. Even on a really low setting on the mix slider, it's still way too bright. So I'm going to turn the gain down in the actual grade node a bit just to compensate for it. And then turn the mix slider up slightly. 
If I turn that on and off, you can see that's adding some nice flary streaks onto the headlights. And there we go, that's the composited shot. There's lots more you can do to this to make it bed in better, and it would also benefit from probably a slightly better model. This is just one that I found online for free, and I textured it quite quickly before I made this video. So that's a look into the basics of CG compositing in Nuke. Like I said, if you want to get hold of these project files, they're on my Patreon for a dollar. You can get the Blender file with the car if you want to change it or put it in your own footage. And you can also get my copy of the Nuke script if you want to download it and have a play. Thanks very much for watching. Consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.